All right, guys, so we got to talk about a couple more important governor races following Ron DeSantis' blowout victory in Florida over Democrat Charlie Chris, who apparently the news media couldn't even find one supporter of his in Miami, okay? Deep blue Miami Dade couldn't find one Chris supporter, which again is a sign of a red tsunami coming. I mean, that's what it looks like as the making of this video. Uh, and we got to talk about two more governor races that are extremely important that have been called by at least one mainstream outlet. And it looks like it's going to stick. OK, so I feel pretty safe talking about this right now as the first race we got to talk about is the Texas governor race between Greg Abbott, uh, the incumbent Republican and Beto O'Rourke. OK, the guy who continuously loses elections. OK, remember, he lost to Ted Cruz. In a Senate race, he also lost in a Democrat primary when he was running for president. Uh, and now he's back <laughs> to try to be governor of Texas and he lost. OK, he lost. And uh, this is no surprise because, again, Beto is one of these Democrat social media superstars uh, who was more concerned about hugging up to LGBTQ <laughs> and then actually trying to appeal to the people of Texas. So yeah, this guy gave a full throated endorsement to being able to trans kids, right? Uh, he basically flip flopped on whether or not he wanted to take people's guns away. Uh, obviously he's soft on the border, even though he pretends like he's not, he is soft on the border. And also on top of that, we can never forget that pathetic stunt that he pulled in the wake of the Uvalde mass shooting, okay, where he interrupted Greg Abbott when he was talking to the people there during a press conference, actually doing his job. Beto made a huge scene out of it, and the mainstream liberal media praised him, right? They praised him. Oh, this is so great. Beto, he's standing up for the people. Well, it seems like the people of Texas didn't really appreciate that enough, right, to make him governor of the state okay as again greg abbott is projected to win and then you also have another race with brian kemp versus stacy abrams in which it is now projected that brian kemp is going to win that race again you have stacy abrams who was also another democrat superstar who invested in social media Yeah, this is what she was doing, okay? And she's also the chief election denier, right? The chief insurrectionist of the Democrat Party who claimed that because of voter suppression in 2018, that's why she lost to Kemp, okay? So this time around, okay, we have a record historic number of people voting, including black people, and she still lost, okay? So uh, just... Be prepared for mainstream liberal media to say that it was because of voter suppression. It wasn't because people weren't feeling her. They weren't feeling her policies. They weren't feeling Democrats. Maybe Brian Kemp is actually doing a good job. <laughs> Can't be that Stacey Abrams was out here pushing uh, remote learning and masking kids, okay, while she would take photo ops with children all masked and she's not masked, <laughs> okay? The children are all masked, but she's not. Yeah, blatant Democrat elitism that we saw from the whole party uh, during the midst of the COVID pandemic and Stace Abrams was one of the worst offenders, okay? If anything, considering her health profile, she should have been the one wearing a mask, okay? Not the children, her. <laughs> she should have been wearing the mask. It has to be voter suppression and then they will blame black men, okay? <laughs> They're gonna blame black men and sexism for why Stacey Abrams lost to Brian Kemp. Again, it's coming. I'm telling you guys it's coming. So uh, as of the making of this video, uh, the New York Times hasn't called this race quite yet. But again, if you're looking at the numbers here, I mean, it's over, right? It's over. And the same thing with uh, Texas. Again, if you look at the numbers, similar numbers here, uh, it's basically over. Some other uh, outlets like Fox News, they've called this race. So I feel pretty comfortable with this. It is also worth mentioning that Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who used to be Trump's press secretary, uh, she has won her governor's race in Arkansas. So congratulations to her. 
Um, you know, this is a historic victory. I believe she is the first woman to become governor of that state. So this is a victory for women that Democrats won't celebrate. Right? They won't be celebrating this victory for women. With that being said, I want to go back to the Florida governor race real quick. As <laughs> on MSNBC, okay, they got Simone Sanders, who used to work for the Biden administration, uh, saying that, well, the Democrats lost in Florida because they didn't fund the race enough. Take a look. It's an yeah. investment issue, though, also, yeah. because the Democratic Party, look, if you go back to 2018, the National Democratic Party gave over a million dollars to the Florida Democratic Party. This year, they barely gave 700000 That means pennies for Miami-Dade's Democratic Party, other folks across the state. If you look at the last couple governor's races, mm -hmm. um, where even Democrats lost, they were within a percentage point or less. This is not competitive tonight. And to me, that means that there needs to be some internal conversations about infrastructure. What does the infrastructure look like? If the Miami Democratic, uh, the Miami Day Democratic Party chair um, was our Florida Dem chair was already out this morning, basically saying we've done what we could. The national folks have written us off. And I think that's a real conversation to have to the point that you just made. I agree. That's infrastructure investment money. But there's massive message problems with this critical voting cohort in Miami Dade that we've got to get on top of. And Alex yeah, so that brings me to this tweet right here from Glenn Greenwald that I thought was a very interesting and brilliant observation um, about the Democrats and their spending strategy because I don't think they have a spending problem in Florida per se or even, you know, Georgia or Texas or anything like that. I really think that it's just the fact that those governors are doing a good job, right? Like Greg Abbott is doing a good job. Ron DeSantis is doing a good job. Brian Kemp is doing a good job. I think people just like those governors. I think they're doing a good job. Sometimes you just can't beat a man that is doing a good job. And I think that Democrats just have to admit that, that Republicans are just better at governing than them, <laughs> at least at this current moment, right? That That's what's happening, okay? But again, Democrats here, when you do look at where they spent money, they spent money on social media superstars, okay? They're putting the, the cart before the horse here, okay? Uh, because they want the young people to come out here and vote. And they believe that if all the young people came out and voted, then everybody would vote Democrat, right? And Democrats would just sweep. But the problem is even young people aren't stupid enough <laughs> and they come out here and vote Democrat. There's no reason why you should be voting Democrat in 2022. I'm just sad, right? I'm just sad. I think we need a mental evaluation for all the people who did go and vote Democrat uh, during this primary. But again, Glenn Glenwall says, it's amazing how much money Democratic voters waste on social media stars in clearly unwinnable races, doing nothing but enriching Democrat consultants. 75 million on Beto, 70 millions on Demings. She lost to Marco Rubio down in Florida in Miami. 11 million on MTG's opponent, someone named Marcus Flowers. I did a video on him. I said that he was a grifter, okay? He knew there was no way he would actually win at waste. But again, Democrats tricked their base into sending money to these people thinking that they could win their races. And that's just not the case, right? They, they, like, Beto had no chance of beating Greg Abbott. Uh, Demings was not going to beat Marco Rubio. And Marcus Flowers' damn sure was not going to beat Marjorie Taylor Greene. But hey, at least Democrat consultants got new votes, right? All these consultants are the same people that told Democrats that, hey, talking about the so-called threat to democracy is a good campaign strategy, right? Not talking about the economy, not talking about inflation, not actually trying to present real solutions to inflation in the economy. You know, don't talk about that stuff. That's a bad strategy. Talk about the so-called threat to democracy, abortion, right? That is what you should be talking about. Again, these people became millionaires off the backs of idiots that <laughs> donated to these people. Not to mention, Stace Abrams raised $105 million counting her pack, so we won't include that yet since her race hasn't been called. Again, that's as of him uh, tweeting this out. But again, you know, uh, at this point, it, it seems like uh, Brian Kemp has won that race. So yeah, $105 million going up in smokes. Going up in smokes. So, again, Glenn Greenwald here, on point. He said, look, maybe liberals online can be told to direct their cash to competitive races rather than ones based on the fun social media stars always on The View. Wonder how rich Democrat consultants got in this race. They got super rich, okay? <laughs> this was a transfer of wealth, 
right? That's exactly what happened here. But hey, look, I guess what they say, a fool and his money are soon parted. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.